I lost you, Pete. I can't hear you. Mute myself. I'll bet, the, I'll bet the audience can hear me now. It's amazing <laughs> what that un unmute button does. Anyway, welcome to In the Huddle. Uh, this is our 12th episode or 11th episode of In the Huddle, and we're, ex we're extremely proud of the fact that we're joined today uh, by my friend and teammate, Tony Collins. And uh, we've got a lot to talk about, a lot to cover. Uh, but before we get started, um, In the In the Huddle is brought to you by, today's episode of In the Huddle is brought to you by uh, several um, supporters, Mark Cruz and family. Over the years, Mark has supported Patriots alumni with mentoring and advice and along with his family has participated in all of our events and programs. Patriots alumni and its impact in the community does not exist without Mark Cruz. Thank you, Mark Cruz and family. Brought to you by Scoreboard Enterprises Incorporated, specializing in scoreboard sales, service, and installation. Scoreboard Enterprises was founded on the need for service on scoreboard and timing equipment and is still the cornerstone of their business today. Owner Chuck Hurley, has been involved in Patriots Alumni Stars and Stripers Fishing Tournament, raising funds for its Football for You program. Evenfield, a nonprofit education organization promoting character, integrity, and ethical leadership through sports. Evenfield and its founder, Chuck Wilson, are partners of Patriots Alumni, bringing positive messaging to the youth, families, and coaches participating in Football for You. And last but not least, Mayo Designs, a digital marketing team for business that believe in making a better place. As a partner, Carrie Mayo and her design team has certainly made Patriots alumni more successful in delivering its mission to the youth of New England. How's that? I think I got through all of that very neatly. And uh, I so appreciate uh, all of our sponsors for being on board uh, with what we're doing here. You know, the coronavirus, uh, has, the, the coronavirus has really made it difficult for us to get out and do uh, the programs and things that we're used to doing uh, this time of year. So um, being able to do in the huddle and having it supported has really been a, uh, uh, a terrific for, for what we're trying to do. Tony Collins, I'm, I'm, are you awake there? Perfect. I'm awake. I'm awake. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for joining us, Tony. As, uh, as our listening audience, uh, who, who are our regular audience, might, uh, might recall that We've spent the, the last 10 episodes or something really focused on the, uh, the players of the 70s. Um, we could name them if we wanted to, but if you could name a player in the 70s, that person was on the in the huddle. And we've made the shift now. You are our first 80s. I couldn't be more pleased to have uh, my running back, my cohort, my guy in the huddle, Tony Collins, joining us today. Welcome, Tony. Great to be here, Pete. Uh, that's awesome. Um, we got uh, we got a few things we can talk about uh, today. I mean, we could we and, and if we run out of things uh, that are on the list, we can always make stuff up. You know how that <laughs> how that goes with all of us, anyway. So, um, you know, the the you might want to explain a little bit of the background. It, it, it's it 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 really kind of is a is a amazing thing to me. Is I I knew that you grew up in upstate New York. Mm -hmm. uh, you found your way down to East Carolina University. Um, mm -hmm. how, how did that happen from Penn Yan to East Carolina? How, make, make that thing work for us. Okay, so you know, as a senior, you get five official visits, right? So my fourth visit was to the University of Florida, the Gators, right? Yeah. And so um, I've never been on an airplane before. And I'm from a family of 16, so we never got a chance to ride an airplane. <laughs> So I'm more excited about getting on the airplane than going on the visit, man. <laughs> so I, I get down to the University of Florida, man, and I love it. It's just fantastic. Uh, my high school colors were orange and blue. University of Florida is orange and blue. It's a right fit, man. I, at, at that time, 
you sign a letter of intent. So I signed my letter of intent, everything. I'm going to University of Florida. I fly back home and I, I get a call on the, I fly back home, I think on a Sunday, I get a call on a Tuesday from Pat Dye, the, the, the legend, the from, he used to coach at Auburn. He was at East Carolina at the time. And so Pat Dye calls me and says, we want you to come on a visit. We see you got another visit left on your, on your schedule and we would love for you to come down and visit us. My first question to him, are you guys flying me? He said, yeah, we're gonna fly you. I said, hell yeah, I'm coming, man. I'm gonna get an airplane again for the second week in a row. <laughs> I had no intentions in going to East Carolina, man. I just went down there for the trip, went down there to get on the airplane and I met Pat Dye. And Pat Dye takes me to this restaurant called Parker's. Uh, I remember just like it was yesterday, man. He sits me down and he says, he says, son, if you come here, you're going to get an opportunity to play. You're going to get an opportunity to play in the NFL. That's all he said. And that's all I needed to hear. I call back home. I call my mom and my dad. And I said, I, I don't think I want to go to University of Florida anymore. I want to go to East Carolina University. My dad says, get your butt back on the plane. You don't know what you're talking about right now. You don't want to go to East Carolina University. <laughs> so I I get back home, I go back home, and, and man, I, I don't know what it was. It was, it was just something about Pat Dye. Uh, it, it was just something about him. And I, I remember my father saying, because <laughs> he was kind of upset with me, because he kind of set up the University of Florida thing for me, because his brother uh, was down there working for the University of Florida. That's how, that's how I really got that visit. But uh, <clears throat> my father goes, I heard of North Carolina and I heard of South Carolina, but where in the hell is East Carolina? <laughs> Wasn't even on the map, man, but I made the decision to go to East Carolina University instead of Florida uh, and the rest is history. Wow. And no regrets. No regrets. No regrets at all. Absolutely right. not. Similar to my experience when I got recruited, um, I, I had a whole bunch of letters come in the door and it, with invitations to go visit a lot of people. My dad and his infinite wisdom said, you better narrow this down to about three <laughs> and, and take it from there. And I'd never been on an airplane either. And uh, I, I grew up in, in, in Oregon uh, at a, and went to an all boys Catholic school. And anyone that was any good at my high school ended up at Notre Dame. And since oh. I was old enough to understand football, I was going to Notre Dame. I had memorized the fight song. I had got it all done. So my, my first my first experience on an airplane was to South Bend, Indiana, and uh, wow. meet Vera Parsegan. And wow. I, I came back from, from Notre Dame, and I was still going to Notre Dame until I landed in Boulder, Colorado the next week. And, and it got a little confusing after that. But um, anyway, I ended up picking uh, Colorado and no there, even though Notre Dame won a national championship in 74, which would have been my sophomore year. Wow, wow. But anyway... Still no regrets. I had a, I had yep, a great yep. career. I'm doing it, and who can who can fault where where it where it landed us? You know. I know, right? It together, was all, it was all set. Yep. Together in Foxborough. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? <laughs> Funny man. But, you know, talk about uh, that the '81 draft, the year your rookie year, uh, coming out of East Carolina. That 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 draft was pretty prolific for um, for the Patriots. We've talked about. The 73 draft that, that brought John Hanna, Sam Cunningham, and Daryl Stingley to the Patriots. We've talked about the 76 draft that brought Mike Haynes, Tim Fox, and some, some guy named Brock to the, to the Patriots. <laughs> that 81 draft, you take a look at, um, you know, the, the, the previous two drafts that I mentioned, all, three, all the three guys were drafted in the first round. In the 81 draft, we got probably more starters out of that draft, but we had Brian Holloway in the first round, Donnie Blackman in the second round, and, and you were in the third round. Is that is that the I case? Was, I was I was actually in the second round, and, and Donnie was in the in the I think it was third or fourth round. Okay, because so I flipped that. Because yep. Ron Wooten was in that in that draft too. Yeah, and he was like fifth round, and then and then Lynn Dawson was like in the eighth round or right. something. Yeah, 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 and yeah. All of those were imp big impact players. Yeah, man, it, it was it was it was it was something special. Uh, they they really drafted me uh, to return kicks. That's what I mean. That's what they kind of told me because 
the year before they 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 had got Vegas Ferguson, and you know Vegas had a good year his his rookie season, and um, but you know they I, they talked to me said we want you to come up, uh, you know we got Vegas Ferguson we're gonna give you opportunity but Vegas Ferguson is our starter but we want you to return kicks but in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to start. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't I didn't think nothing about just returning kicks. And you know, it was it was it was pretty cool, man, coming up to training camp. And you know, I, I had uh Vegas Ferguson in front of me and Horse Ivory was in front of me, and I was the third string running back. Right. And um I think I think it was the third third week or maybe the second week of training camp. Uh well, we, we've already played a couple a couple games, so it must have been third or fourth week. And Horace Ivory goes down with something. It was either ankle or knee. Horace is hurt. So not, now I move up to the second string. Uh, then I think week four or week five or whatever it was, it was the last week. It was the last week of training camp. Vegas Ferguson goes down with an ankle. Hmm. So Vegas is hurt. And so now I get to start the first game of the season against the Baltimore Colts. <laughs> <laughs> And it was history since then, man. It was, I think, I still remember. I know I caught like four passes for like 60 some yards. I rushed for about 80 some yards that that game. And uh, man, it was it was fantastic to start my first uh, a game of, of my career against the Baltimore Colts. Yeah, you know, people don't realize it too. Is, 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 and you mentioned, you know, Horace as a, as a kick returner. This is a kick returner. You know, um, a couple of years before that, Raymond Claiborne set records as a kick returner. I think mm -hmm. he returned he returned three for touchdowns, and I think that was in '79, I believe '78 or '79, when Ray Clay was doing that. But you know, they relied on they relied on the mainstream guys to 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 handle that football and make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Ivory yeah. was no joke returning returning kicks. So just for the want of you, them wanting you, um, yeah. Back, Pretty big deal. Horace Ivory was a good running back, man. Horace and Vegas were two good running backs. That I mean, we were we were we were stacked. I mean, at, at running mm -hmm. back, we we had, and then we Sam was still there, right? So we had Horace Ivy, Vegas Ferguson, myself, Sam Cunningham, mostly uh, the Tupu, mostly the Tupu. Right? Oh uh, man, we we had we had a good backfield, really good backfield. Yeah, and you had a pretty good offensive line in front. We had a we had a fantastic offensive line. <laughs> 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 making it all work that way right yes, sir. <laughs> well i think the other things that we had the, the weapons we had on the outside you know with stanley morgan um you know uh don hasselbeck was was he or was he already yeah, gone he was he there was, no don was there i played a couple oh, years with don yeah he was there um you know so we had we had some some legitimate weapons i think i was Jackson was around still wasn't he who harold jackson Harold Jackson came in like uh, my. He came in '79. I'm not sure if he was still around. In no, 81. no, I, I played with Harold. Yeah, I played with Harold, so he was there in '81, and then yeah. he he started coaching. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, you take a look at that off, and he got Grogan throwing the ball around. That was, that was pretty. Yeah, we, we had a pretty, we had a pretty good team, man. Uh, offensively, we 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 were very decent, very yeah, decent. Oh, really good, really good. You know. I don't know that a lot of people realize um, you are third in the all-time rushing list with the Patriots. I know you know that. <laughs> I, think was, I think it was you that told me that. No, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it starts with Sam Cunningham, then Jim Nance, yeah. and, and then Tony Collins. And then you know who's fourth? I don't know. Curtis Martin. Curtis Martin. You know, they, 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 New England's had some pretty good running backs come through there. I guess they through have. The years. <laughs> I guess they have. They just don't last as long as some of the other ones. You know, it's just, yeah. that's just kind of the way it is. But yeah, you're number three on the list. And 1983, you set the single season or single game rushing record against the Jets. I can't think of anybody better to set it against than the dog. <laughs> For two hundred yep. rushing in that game in eight in uh, in nineteen eighty three, that was terrific. That was a game that you 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 never can forget as a running back, man. The holes you guys made for me were incredible. I think I my average my average per carry were like like nine points nine point seven uh, yards a carry that that game. But it was like every hole was just like right. Uh, uh, you can drive a truck through it, man. So I, my my job was pretty easy. You guys made my you guys made me look 
real good that day. <laughs> you know, I think I think we went into that game um, with with some uh, with some clues as to what their defense was doing because we did a lot of check with me and scrimmage yep, yep. against that day, and I think we were doing a lot out of our stretch and our reach kind of technique blocking up front. But it was to the point where I think we recognized slants on them or something. And you had an amazing day cutting back. I mean, the holes that we were washing on the backside of some of those plays were amazing. Like you say, 212 yards. So that's outstanding. Yeah, man, it's 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 a it's a day I'll never forget. And and you know, I owe it all to you guys. Like I said, man, the holes were so big that I mean, I, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of my other guys could have probably did the same thing. But it was it was it was a it was a it was a it was one of those days that I never forget, man. Yeah, no, it's yeah. one of those amazing, amazing deals. You know, when when uh, when I was playing a little bit, you experienced too. Is is we had several head coaches and 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 with all different kind of philosophies. You know, when I when I first came in, I had Chuck Fair Chuck Fairbanks, which mm -hmm. I thought was I thought he was a terrific coach. You know, he, he was. Uh, he was a guy that that uh, wanted to surround himself with coaches that knew more about the game than he did. And then he'd turn those position coaches loose on the players. And he drafted, he had a great eye for, for talent and, and putting teams together. He did a great job as a Patriots coach. And then when when he left to go to University of Colorado, he turned the reins over or the, or the Patriots hired Ron Earhart, who was an, an offensive genius as far as right, I'm concerned. Right. He, the, the offenses that he ran um, that he's known for, I don't know a lot of people would consider it, but, you know, uh, the job ran it. it. It was very prolific, that type of offensive style that Earhart created uh, all throughout the league. In fact, I can sit and watch these games. And if they get out of those spread formations every once in a while and start pounding the football, I recognize ride 34 and I recognize flow 36 and bam, and, and, you know, <laughs> Wham blocks and all that kind of stuff. Those were what Ron Ron Earhart brought to it. Terrific offensive coordinator, and I thought a great coach, but couldn't get anything turned around. When then, then they brought in. Go ahead. Well, how many years was Ron was Earhart there with you? Well, he was there when I came in in '76 as the offensive coordinator. Well, I mean, I'm, yeah, uh, and as 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 head coach, how, how many years coach? was? He well, let's see. They the Fairbanks left after seventy eight, and so he he was seventy nine, eighty, and then eighty one. Fired after eighty one. Yep. Right. Right. So see, I only got I only got to be with him for one year. Yeah. Then Ron Myers came in and got rid of all the old guys. <laughs> oh my goodness! I don't know if he got rid of them or the Sullivans got rid of them, but it was a mass exodus out of there. I looked up at one point. I was upset that I was. I was left behind. I thought I, <laughs> thought I missed the bus or something. But you take, take a look at it. They had, you know, Russ Francis gone, uh, Don Hasselbeck gone, Mike Haynes, Tim Fox, Sam Cunningham, Andy Johnson. I mean, you, you could have. Yeah. Anyway, that's a, that's a lot of guys, man. That's a lot of guys. That, that's a heart and soul of, of, you know, you know, Grogan remained, Hannah, uh, Steve Nelson. Uh, Stanley Morgan, Ray Claiborne, but man, they, 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 boy, they washed the books in a hurry when in, in 82. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Ron Meyer was here. He brought in a couple of pretty good coaches with him. A guy named Dante Scarnecchia, who just retired a couple of years right, ago. Right. Dante. Imagine that, you know, unbelievable. A friend of mine, Steve Sidwell, came in with that group. Um, anyway, so. So do, let, let me, let me ask you a question, Pete. Now, as 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 for me, as a young kid coming in when Ron was there, you know the Ron was a rah rah shake it up. I, it, I didn't mind it at all, but I know I knew for a fact that you older guys really didn't like Ron too much. <laughs> yeah. Well, there, yeah, one guy in particular, number seventy three, was it too? <laughs> um, yeah, he just he had that kind of a. Uh, a showman kind of presence about him and, and no, uh, and, and no, no grit, you know, it was, it, it seemed to me like he was all show and, and no, nothing to back it up. Although he brought yeah. some coaches with him. He did a great job at SMU when he was there, although, you know, they ran him out on a rail because of, uh, of, of violations that he did down there. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 
it, it, you know, the other thing that we looked at is we saw we saw a lineup of coaches come through Foxborough trying to fill that job with Earhart um, after they fired Earhart. And it seemed like Ron Meyer was like their fourth choice, not their first. Yeah. You know? So he came in under kind of uh, weird conditions. And I, I think I think that he that that he the Sullivans were a little unfair to him and they wanted him to do th they wanted him to clean house and be the bad guy. And I don't think he was the bad guy. He was the he was the front guy. He was the recruiter guy that uh, that that you would want your kids to go to wherever he was going to school because he was so good in your living room telling you everything right. you to hear right. about your kid. You know the kind of guy he was. But anyway, <laughs> didn't work out so good. <laughs> didn't work yeah. out so well. Yeah. Um, you know, and then what was it? Eighty. 84 84 yeah. when uh when 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 uh Raymond came in yeah. it was 84 85 84 what right 84, 84. yeah 84. Halfway, we were halfway through the season and 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 they brought in Raymond they fire him oh it was 80 yeah 84 they fire him you know the other thing that Ron Meyer came in with you know thinking about it in 82 we had that NFL player strike and that was his right. That was his first year at it. So right. it, it wasn't a good year to join the Patriots. Right. Nobody stretched the imagination. But yeah, 84, halfway through the season, they fire him and uh, and bring in Raymond Berry. That was weird. I'm going to tell you, man, that, that was the, I, I think, was the best thing. Uh, oh, no question. It's just something about Raymond. You know, you know, he's a Hall of Famer. He knows the game. Guy never gets excited. He never. I, I. I don't think I've ever seen Raymond yell not once while while he was coaching us. No. Uh, just a a cool, collective guy, and and a, and a guy that you admired, a guy that you would, you know, you know, one of the two coaches that I love, uh, Pat Dye and Raymond Barry. Those those, those two coaches were probably the the, the two coaches that made a big, big difference in my life. And uh, when Raymond came there, man, it was just like, you you just wanted to play for him. You wanted to be do your best for him. And it, it, and it was all about a team thing. He, he we talked team, uh, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't care if I didn't run the ball. I, you know, I just wanted to be out there and I just wanted us to win. And it, and it was because of Raymond. You know, and, that, and that's absolutely right. The, the thing I admired so much, what, you know, Raymond Berry was, uh, on the staff at Ron Earhart's staff before you got here. He was a wide receivers coach. Oh, um, I didn't know that. Yep. Yeah, so, so we had a, a bit of a taste of him before he, he was a head coach. And when they asked him to be head coach, they, you know, he was living in Medfield and, and doing something after, after the whole Ron Earhart thing. And uh, he came back on board. And the thing I, rem I, I admired him so much for is he spent the majority at the remainder of that season, getting to know the players, getting to know the players personally, by name, their families, um, you know, th that, that whole bit. He, 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 I think he had flashcards and, and was, <laughs> was, was memorizing who was who and, and that kind of thing. But, but he, he wanted to be personal with, with everybody. And that was his, his style. That was his way of being able to motivate and incent people is to understand and what really tick in order to do that he got really personal with people and i admired that um, of him making that effort and then he put together his own staff in 85 and you know i I'm, i remember training camp at bryant college that summer and mm -hmm. him standing in front of us and saying okay who wants to win the super bowl it was the first day it was the first day we were all assembled there and everybody his hands went up we all wanted to win the super bowl right and then he started describing what it was, what his opinion or what his take was on what you had to do to win the Super Bowl. And he started started describing all the hard work and dedication and sacrifice and the extra things, the little things that we had to concentrate on in order to do it. And those hands that were stretched out a minute ago saying we all wanted to win the Super Bowl had to have a <laughs> little bit. Of, I don't know if I want to do it that hard, but anyway, <laughs> he did. He put it together. And he had us believing. He had us believing, and it was the little things. It was the, 
recovering fumbles. You know, you remember, and, do you do you remember that? We we, remember we used to be we we used to be at practice, and he had he had you lineman going down recovering fumbles, and I was yeah. like, why, why do you got the lineman doing that? And teaching us how. I mean, there was a technique to it. And then he'd go over to the defensive side and teach him how to strip the football. Yeah, you know? yeah. So it and it was so it was those little things. It was how you tied your shoes. It was how you acted in the locker. It was you know love one another. It was bringing you know a lot of people together that that really taught taught us that football was more than just lining up on Sunday. And he did an outstanding job at that. You know, I don't know. I don't know who started this though. And and I, I'm I'm pretty sure Raymond had something to do with it. Do you remember every after every game that on that Monday was it a Monday? Yeah, it was a Monday. We come back on a Monday and we would all go down to that little little bar with it's a red place. I forget the name of this place. It's like right down the street from the stadium. We would all go down there. Uh, either the linebackers would have a a day, the running backs would have a day. The alignment would have a day and we would all go down on a Monday. Not everybody, but a lot of guys would come down and we would have chicken wings and yeah. I forget the name of this place, but, but, but what, what, what was happening, man, we started coming together, man. We started uh, really loving each other. That's what it was, man. We, and we, we, we became brothers that year. I, I really believe that. And, and he was one of the reasons why. Yeah, no, he was, that was, that, and it, on Monday, that was Monday after practice, and and it was you know like the running backs would treat one week, you know, and then right, yeah, the running backs would make the rookie running back pay for the whole, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's how that worked out. I forget the name of, I forget what it was, but it was right there at the Red Fox Hotel. It was just you could walk there from the stadium, and then we we'd end up there at Eagle Brook, um, yeah. but yeah, that was and that was right. It was it just it just joined camaraderie around and and. You know, you, you you lowered your guard. You drank a few beers with each other, and 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 you were ready yeah. to face the next week. That was yeah. I don't know that it was Raymond that started it, but I think it was because of Raymond's belief in what we did and what he was trying to teach us in the locker room. Right. It, it just automatically spilled over. Let's make this happen. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 That's a yeah. Great, great coach, man. He was well, a great just coach. Get to know each other. You know, you're out there blocking for each other, <laughs> or, or you know. You know, running behind a, a you know an off line pays to get to know him every once in a while. You know, <laughs> <Yep>. I'm <Find> a beer. <laughs> That's good. That's it. That's yeah, it, Ray man. was good, and we all know how that season now that season turned out. And uh, you know, to 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 advance the way that we did, you know, I tell people that you know we we made the playoffs just by the by the hair of our teeth. Actually, we were we were eleven and five. We weren't even in, in, you know, we didn't win the AFC, the AFC East. You know, we weren't even in second place in the AFC East. We had, to go, we had to go down to the <laughs> to, to a Giant Stadium and play the Jets. Yep. You know, in that first playoff game. You realize, and, and I know, uh, I hope all of our fans are listening, but that was the first Patriot away victory in their playoff history. That was the oh, first really? playoff road victory in the Patriots history. I know that I see I see I didn't even know that. I could be making it up, but I'll have somebody <laughs> check that. I have somebody check that. I think that was the first road victory playoff game in Patriots history. And we went well, nobody, down there. No, nobody thought we were going to beat the Jets. Nobody thought we were going to go down there and beat them. No. We lost to them down there. We we won at home and then uh, against them and then we lost to them later in the season down there. And then and then the face playoffs and they were on a they were on a real um tear they, they really were a pretty, pretty good football team they had you know the new york sack exchange defensively and and mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff so but i'll tell you what uh was the same deal it was was strip the football recover the ball get it back to the offense and and that's how we won that football game yep that's how it was man that, that those 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 days at, at practice recovering those fumbles. I, I think I'm I'm not I'm not, I'm not on, I don't know about this, but I think we led the league in in turnovers. Uh, as, I mean, as far as getting turnovers uh, that yeah, we uh, if we didn't lead the league, we were we we're number one, we we're number two, or number three. We were up there at the top. 
Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And I think we were, I, that, that takeaway ratio, I think we were, we were right up there on the leaderboard with it. And that kept us in a lot of football. We oh, looked yeah. at the three playoff games. It happened again the next week in, in uh, Los Angeles. We were out there yep. and played the Raiders. I mean, you know, the, the muff punt recovered for a touchdown in the end zone by Bowman. You know, Huge. The, what, the two or three interceptions? Defense, Scott? Huge. Yeah. Well, Nobody, we, and, 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 and you know what? The – Nobody thought we were going to beat the Jets. And I don't think anybody, I mean, it was like, there's, they definitely can't go out to LA and beat the Raiders. The Raiders, right. they, they got they got a good football team, you know? They got, they got, oh. Mar Marcus Allen. The MVP, <laughs> league MVP Marcus Allen. Not just any old Marcus <laughs> Allen. He, league MVP Marcus Allen. <laughs> and a guy named uh, uh, Howard Long or whatever his yeah, name Yeah, Howie Long. Yeah, oh, man, man. They had a squad. They had a squad. Yeah, they had a squad. That, that, it, but, you know, it was, again, it was turnovers that, that, that kept us in that game. You mm -hmm. know, uh, Tony Eason had a big day. Lynn Dawson catches a magnificent catch in the end. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Touchdown. And, and, you know, Craig James walks in behind a John Hanna blow him up block on that. Oh, on that. man. I, I still remember that block. That was unbelievable, you know. And then, and then we've got our general manager, Pat Sullivan. I love Pat Sullivan <laughs> I love Patrick <laughs> Sullivan to do, but son, he was feeling his oats, so they let him in. They let him into the uh, into the luxury suites too early that day. That he was on a tear, man. He was on our sidelines, just talking trash to everybody that wanted to listen to him, and those that didn't want to. He was shouting things at Howie Long that I wouldn't call anybody, and and now. Uh, I got to, I got went to Pat at, at, during the game. I said, "You got to shut up, man. You're firing up the guy. I'm. You either got to shut up or give me a raise because you're firing up the guy that I got to go out there and block." Oh, he. At one point, Howie Long looked at me and he said, "Who the hell is that?" I said, our owner's son. He's our general manager. He got them so fired up. Well, well did, didn't him and Howie get it, get in there oh, yeah. after the game and Matt Millen. Fat Matt yeah, Miller. Matt Miller, Matt Miller, Matt Miller, yeah, right, right. When after went to went to, and I'm I'm the only guy between I'm the only guy between that swinging helmet that Matt Miller was <laughs> and and Pat Sullivan. <laughs> oh man, but that we was crazy. Oh man, I remember that man. That's crazy. That's yeah. funny. That was we funny. That game. Then we get to come home. Then we got to come home and uh, get ready for the. Um, Dolphins. The AFC Championship game, huh? We oh, man. Three on the road. Now we get to go down to Florida. Remember, we left. <laughs> we left like uh, a week before, didn't we? Early in the week. Yeah, early yeah. in the week. And we ended up training down there because it was so cold up here. And it was nasty and wet down there. So I don't know what made made the big difference. And then, and then remember, <laughs> Raymond, Raymond had uh, somebody go uh, tape, I think, jet takeoffs at Logan Airport. And he had speakers set up. Oh, the sound, the sound, yeah, yeah. yeah. He had speakers <laughs> set up at practice, you know, and then he turned that on and tr we had to learn how to function without hearing. But it yep. just was, it was like, it was so irritating. There were fights, there were people, there were Christian folks fighting the other <laughs> Christian folk. On a, everybody was so, it wasn't just the ornery guys, it was the Christian folks fighting. And he had everybody all on edge fired up with that noise it was so irritating you remember oh that oh my god yeah i do remember that man that was crazy that was crazy nobody thought we were going to beat the dolphins down in miami nobody no we hadn't no patriot team had won a game at the orange bowl since the inception of of the sense of, of the world they had, right. I mean, since his, in 19, <laughs> I think the Dolphins were an expansion team in 66. Since 1966, no Patriot team had ever beaten the Miami Dolphins in the Orange Bowl. And now it's for all the marbles. And it's Dan Marino. And it's the, you know, it's the, uh, it's the, uh, what's the killer bee defense that they had up there. They were all fired they up. Have, they had two pretty good wide receivers, too. Great wide receivers. <laughs> wide receivers they got a guy that can chuck them the ball the only game that the chicago bears lost that year was against miami in miami and yep, yep. Down there and face them. but you know what when we got down I, I, and, and i don't know if raymond ever said this um verbatim but i remember 
I remember when he came back, we were down there. And then on Wednesday, we got the, the, we got the game plan and the playbook. And I remember, this is my recollection, he stood in front of us and he said, you know, with all of the uh, break, film breakdown and the, and the computer tendencies and all that kind of stuff, we figured out, um, we, we have found out a weakness with the, with the Miami Dolphins. And so we we're all kind of on the edge. He said, Dan Marino has a difficult time scoring from his own bench. <laughs> and then he looked around and he said oh line this is all on you this is that's the feeling i got i know it wasn't verbatim but we're putting this on you and 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 that's what we did we ran yes. the football. we did we i think helped. i think i think craig had like 160 yards rushing or something like that uh man it, it was it was it was it was a game where you know i don't i, I don't never i would I, we i don't think I know I wasn't doubting. I don't think nobody on our team was even thinking about, man, we've never won down here before. No. We, I went no, into that game. We, we, we went into that game. I just knew we were going to win. I just knew we were going to win. I, there was, there was no question about it, man. I, and, and, and it came out, it came out perfect. I mean, it really did. It was, it was, I can't even remember the score of the game, but it wasn't close. It was 31 to 17. But yeah. Or- or 31 to 14. I don't remember either then. But I do remember this. There were five or six turnovers in that game. Yep, sure was. Um, and I remember holding on to the football for 41 minutes in that game. Tony Eason threw the ball 13 times. Three of them were for touchdowns. We just smash him in the face all the way down the field. And then he only threw for 13 threw times? 13 times. Wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's crazy. Yeah, That's three of them were for touchdowns. And we just yeah, we ran kept, the ball. We, we, kept Marino, we kept Marino off the field. We kept him on the bench area. That was, yep. That was the big secret that, that yep. they had discovered. Then we – that was so fun to go into that locker room after that game. Oh, my God, man. Right? That was, that was the best – that was the best of best of times right there. All of us in there – Man, it, 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 it kind of brings back tears to me right now just just to see everybody happy and, 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 and you know, all that, the whole, well, the, the greatest thing was nobody expected us to win. And, and so that, that, that was, that just made it so much greater that we, that we went down there and we really put it on them, man. And, and in the locker room and, and you know, see, seeing guys crying and, and just crying with joy, you know, and, and just... Oh man, it's it's something that you never forget in your in your whole life, and uh, I, I'll never forget that that year in that game and that 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 playoffs those playoff games that we won those three games that we run and we we run it, it was it was fantastic man it really was yeah it was and you and you and you do that coupled with the fact that we all loved each other we all cared about each other mm-hmm. and yep. we were doing something we did something very special with all of that that made it made it even that more special yeah then we bought then we bought the ticket to new orleans <laughs> you know uh, what you, you know what I, I did a i did a golf tournament uh about i don't know 20 years afterwards or whatever it was and raymond raymond barry came to my golf tournament <clears throat> and it was me stanley morgan Irvin fryer and uh i, I I can't remember. It was somebody else, but I can't remember who it was. But I know it was Stanley Morgan and Irving Fryer and Coach Barry. We were, we were at a, a restaurant. I took him to a restaurant uh, the night before the tournament. And uh, he, he, uh, he, this is what he says to us. He said, you know, th- that year, the Chicago Bears defense was probably way before its time. And he said, and he says to us, he says, we, we really didn't have an answer for their defense. And uh, he, and, and, and he, that's what he said. He said, we went into the game not knowing what we were going to do offensively because of the, I think it was, what kind of defense was it around? A 5-3 or some kind of crazy defense that was never heard of before. Uh, yeah. Because he said that they had, they had the defense, they're ahead of their time, and they had the players that could play that defense and we weren't really sure what we were going to do in that game. And, you know, it, you know, the, you know how the game turned out, but, uh, that, well, that... I, I would, yeah. And he, and he was right that we really didn't know, but I know, I know one thing we got to that. We got to that game running the football and running the yeah. football effectively. And I, I guarantee you with that, that Chicago, that Chicago defense, 
and Buddy Ryan, you know, they covered they covered center, both guards, and you couldn't get things. You know, maybe running wasn't the best way of doing it, but I would have rather gone down swinging with our best, <laughs> with our best than our first play, our first 12 scrimmage were throwing the football. You know, yeah. it, it, you know, when you take a look at it, um, uh, we, 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 we recovered a fumble on their first possession, you know, right. and then right. uh, uh, Stanley Morgan has to reach really high for a, would have been a spectacular touchdown. Cause we're, you know, but you, we're, but you, but you know, you, you, you know, what that uh, on that play, Pete, I think somebody got a hand on that ball or if they didn't get a hand on it, they, 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 you know how when, when, when the, when the ball is coming and somebody puts their hand up, usually that's a catch that Stanley cook that usually would make. Right. You know, that's a catch that he, 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 he makes 99% of the time. Right. And uh, I really think somebody got a hand on that ball or, 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 or messed up his vision wow. or something. And we had to kick a field goal. Uh, and then the instead, next, instead of a touchdown. the next possession that, 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 that um, make, rolls out and hits Donnie Blackman right between the numbers, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> eh, well. We got there. We, we, we were there. You know, you know what? You know hey, what I want to do a shout out. Our buddy Garen Barris is is, uh, is listening to this whole thing. So Garen, my man. We might tell a couple of Garen stories. That, you know, <laughs> 85, though, 85 was Garen's rookie year. He had and a hell of a year, too. He had like 17 sacks. <laughs> You <laughs> correct me here in a minute. I'm going to sit here. But it was because it was because he was the rookie, and they were sending every, everybody to block Andre Tippett, so it opened the opened that outside up for him. Yeah, so. he had he had a great rookie year, man. Yeah, he had a great <laughs> Stanford. Garen Barris from Stanford. Yes, sir, my man. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a that was a tough one. That was a tough pill to swallow after all we had done. Yeah, it was. It was. But, but, but but we we can we can say we were the first Patriot team to get to the Super Bowl. We can say that. We can say that, huh? And I, you know what? I we can say that proudly. Yeah. You know, you know it was for for what we did. We pioneered our way there because we were the first team to ever win three games on the road. <laughs> so, <laughs> Garen just corrected me. He had thirty sacks as rookie. <laughs> <laughs> No, but we were the first team to win three to, to win to go as a wild card team and win three games on the road. Right. Pittsburgh Pittsburgh did it and won a Super Bowl uh, after us with uh, with Roethlisberger, but we were the first to do it. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> thirty sacks. <laughs> Gary, my man. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that was a that was a tough way to win all of that, or to, I mean to to end that season. So yeah, yeah, you know. So tell me, uh, Tony Collins, what are you what are you doing these days? I know I know a little bit about. Uh, I know you do fundraising activities, so that means you must have some foundation going. Tell me what we do with your foundation. What what uh, uh, what what we do now? I focus on my little my little hometown in Pinyin. Uh, uh, that's what we focus on. It's a it's a uh, it's a great little hometown, man. I I got it. I I got to get you there, man. I know you don't play golf, but I got to get you there. Uh, one one year, Pete, for you just to see it. I didn't know how beautiful my hometown was until I actually left it, and uh, and so we we uh we we do a lot of fundraising there in the hometown. We 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 give a lot to uh, uh, different organizations that in that's in that little town, uh, just trying to give back and uh, let the kids know uh, about the. I mean, it, it was a big drug problem uh, in that area. Uh, you know, I went through. I went through that in my career as well, and, uh, and just getting back focused. And I wanted to do something. I wanted to uh, to help people because you know I, I truly believe that um, God spared my life. I, I shouldn't even be here talking to you right now, Pete. Um, and I just want to give back. I want to let people know that they didn't have to go through some of the things that I went through uh, by making bad choices. <clears throat> and and uh, got an opportunity to, to actually write a book and uh, the, I'm still selling the book now to this day. And um, just, just with the foundation, it, it's really just wanna, just wanna help people. Uh, I, I get a lot of people uh, reaching out to me and different things. And I've been doing a lot of things. I kind of uh, 
fall, falling back on the speaking engagements now. And uh, my wife tells me I'm getting too old. I can't travel by myself anymore, you know? So uh, cut down on, <laughs> on the speaking engagements. And, uh, and so really all, all we're doing now is just do the, through the foundation, raising money for my little hometown in Pinyan, uh, trying to keep kids off of drugs and keeping, uh, keeping that hometown just uh, uh, thinking rightly, being positive, uh, and, and just, just helping people, man. One of the greatest things that I learned from playing football uh, that, you know, God gave me this opportunity. He gave me the opportunity to, to play football and to play, play it well. And, and it wasn't all about the football. It was all about what was going to happen in my life. And, 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 and one of the greatest things that I, I can say in my life that I'm doing is giving back. And I, and I love to give back. I love helping kids. Uh, man, I, I, I don't want any kid to go through what I went through in my life because they don't have to. Because I, I truly believe that God spared me so I can, you know, give back to kids and give back to whoever wants to, uh, to, to live a great life. I, man, I'm going to tell you, Pete. <clears throat> I'm living my best life right now, man. I, 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 I don't know if my life could get any better. I have, I have 11 grandkids uh, just who I adore and, and they adore me. And I just love seeing them. Now I, I've, I've been, I had to shut back, cut back a little bit now because of the COVID, you know, can't visit them like I usually, but I'm, I'm usually gone all the time because I have, grandkids in, in Louisiana. I got grandkids in Charlotte. I got grandkids in Dallas, Texas. I got grandkids in Florida. So <laughs> I'm just trying, we're just traveling all over the, over, over the country, man. Just seeing the grandkids and just loving life right now, man. Life is fantastic. Awesome. Pete. That's awesome. Fantastic. That's so awesome. You have another shot at it. Like you, like you've done, like you've just described. That's, that's terrific. That, that really is terrific. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm, I'm glad that you're, you're getting that message out and, and how important getting that message out is to kids. And, yeah. and I'll tell you what, we, we, we get out of this COVID mess and uh, you fire up that golf tournament in Pen Yan. You let me you coming? Even You going to come? You, you going to play too? I'll, I'll dust off my golf club. <laughs> if, if you have to force me to do it, I'll come out and do that for you. Cause I, I, I believe that strongly in, in what you're doing with those kids. We do the same things around here too. So, <laughs> so you know, great, and that's, and then likewise, I'd like to get you uh, up here every once in a while. You know, we all do you those... gotta, I, All you got to do is tell me when you want me to come, Pete. You know I'm coming, man. You know I'm coming for you, man. I, I will be there for you. Well, I, you. You know what? I, I, I still remember the last time I saw you. And we were uh, – I brought my brothers up to the game. I forget what game. No, it was the Dallas Cowboys game last Pouring year. Pouring down rain. It was yeah. raining so hard. Yeah. We got we had we, a tailgate. We were, we were in the tent and you start telling us some stories. My brothers still talk about you to this day, man. <laughs> you tell them we I made had it a all great up. time, man. <laughs> uh, the best story, the best story that I have on Tony Collins, I'll save for later because this is <laughs> it, it would take us way too long. Oh, no, don't don't tell that story, man. Don't tell that story. <laughs> on the field story too, in case anyone's trying to make stuff up about this. But no, I I, I will I share that. I mean, I share that a lot with with but anyway you mean a lot to me brother and and anything i'll, I'll come out to penyan and make that happen you come out here and do some of these camps we do for kids and see absolutely the kind of impact that patriots alumni are doing here in new england absolutely man i would love to do that make it happen well get this get this, co get this covid bug oh we gotta get we gotta nip this thing in a hurry <laughs> um so i mean if you you mentioned it as as uh, as COVID has pre prevented us from hosting our annual fundraisers and football for you, uh, we've come up with uh, some new opportunities for our partners to stay involved with Patriots Alumni's mission. I'm confident that our events and programs will resume when we can safely return to normal operations. But until then, we're getting creative with our fundraising efforts. We're excited to share a couple of ways you can partner with Patriots Alumni. Um, we doing this, this in the huddle, we're looking for, um, for people that believe in our mission, might want to sponsor, uh, these we will, uh, we'll do your, your logo around any of the collateral that we send out. Uh, people will, um, uh, will know that, that you are a sponsor of this in the huddle. We're also doing another one, Tony, this is pretty cool. It's called in the field. We're doing, we're doing upland hunts down in, uh, Rhode Island at a place called Addyville East. 
Uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're hunting behind dogs and guys, and we're also uh, doing sporting clays down there. So if anyone's interested in all of that, uh, you can get a hold of me. Uh, go to our website, patriots.com, and find out how you might get involved in, in supporting Patriots alumni. Tony Collins, man, thank you for being part of what we're doing here. I'm glad to be a part of it, man. You you are a friend for life, Pete. I, I, I remember uh, all the times uh, being in the huddle with you and, and John and, and Brian and Ron Wooten. Uh, just, just, it was, it was, it's something special, man. It's something that, you know, you, 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 you fight with these guys and, and you go to war with these guys and man, you just love these guys, man. You, 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 you just, and you, know, you guys are my brothers, man. I got a lot of brothers, but, and, and, uh, you guys are my brothers, man, without a doubt. No question about it. Love you guys, man. Well, thank you, man. It's a special, it's a special group when we played we played for the Patriots in a very special time. That's for sure. Yeah. Tony, yeah. thanks, brother. Thank you, man. Thanks for thanks. having me. What? You stay put for just a second. Hold on okay. here while I do a little bit of housework here. We're going to end the live video with, uh, with all of our Facebook live, uh, people. Thank you guys all for watching once again. Join us next week. We're going to have Brian Holloway on um, uh, next Thursday at 430. So tell all your friends and and uh, we'll make that happen. So without that, uh, that, and uh, we'll see you all next week.